Welcome to our first virtual mini ABCs of Rotary. We are currently, some of us are over at Columbia Bank right now. Freddie's joined over here. Wanna say hi, Freddie. <laughs> <laughs> and Bo is over at one of the other computers. So I'm gonna show you guys Bo. <laughs> um, so we have a short little PowerPoint that we wanna go over with everybody. Um, regarding the many ABCs of Rotary. So, John, is it up? I will get it. Let's go on here. Another $5. <laughs> Perfect, okay. So welcome to the many ABCs of Rotary. Um, today is Tuesday, September 22nd. We're very happy that you guys can join us. Um, we're hoping that we'll be able to meet again in the future and not have to do virtual ABCs of Rotary. <laughs> um, so if you have feedback about how this goes, that'd be appreciated because we want to learn and be able to grow and do a better job next time. Um, so John, if you can switch to the next slide. It's a beautiful picture of the bridge. So Rotary Club of Newport, Oregon, service above self. We were established in 1955 and we are district 5110. And you can change that again, John. I did. It's going. Okay. Is it? Is it so yeah, there we go. That's it. So Paul Harris in 1914 um, has a beautiful quote. Whatever Rotary may mean to us, to the world, it will be known by the results it achieves. And you can switch to the next one. I'm on Sun River Internet, so... It is okay. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm going to switch it over to Bo. So uh, one of the things about the Rotary Club, it started in 1905 by an attorney called Paul Harris. So occasionally we'll um, hear a uh, Rotarian receive their Paul Harris award, or they will um, give funds toward their Paul Harris. Uh, this is who it's um, the the honor is named for. It's a, an attorney, Paul Harris, who began the club uh, with the intention of bringing people from with different skills, backgrounds, different industries uh, together in a way to form acquaintances. Um, by you know, 20 years later, there was only, there was a, a Rotary in um, six continents. So quite impressive. More than 35. Um, thousand clubs today 1.2 million members um, and that name Rotary was selected because of how meeting uh, locations uh, traditionally would go around from one person's office to the next person's office and so it would rotate around and uh, that is at least for our club it doesn't usually happen that way although sometimes you might see that in our um, uh, vocational vocational um, I don't know what you call that vocational club or vocational lunches. The lunches. Diane might be able to help me on that, but it's a the vocational uh, avenue of service. How about that? There you go, Diane. <laughs> Thank you very much. I had part, part one word. So uh, when we do that, then we do visit each other's um, businesses and talk about what's going on there. Um, that's where that came from. Okay, John. Slow internet. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta love the slow internet. So what we value in uh, February, the president-elect attends uh, president-elect training. So that's Freddie this year. It's also called Pets. And upon their return, they build their board looking for Rotarians to fill the five avenues of service, as well as the executive officer positions. And to become president, you must have served uh, as an avenue of service director plus an executive director. And uh, Rotary is an international membership organization that's made up of people who share a passion um, and commitment to enhancing communities and improving lives. We're all here because we are passionate about serving our communities and we want to give back. And being a member is an opportunity to take action and make a difference. Um, and it also brings personal rewards and lifelong friendships in the process, which is wonderful. Okay, we're good done. <laughs> Am I moving on? Is this, so, is this right? 
think that's right. Yes. Uh, so um, the the following areas. Uh, so we did club service value. Yeah, it's uh, this is right in, in the following area. So we are we promote peace. Um, good thing. Fight disease, especially uh, polio, is our big push. Um, providing clean water, a a one thing that our club has directly participated in um, uh, internationally. Uh, cert, uh, saving mothers and children, supporting education, uh, growing local economies. All these projects focus on causes that are eligible for uh, global grant funding um, from the Rotary Foundation. So those are things that we value as an organization. Okay, we're ready for the next slide. It's a common. Okay, perfect. So we all, with Rotary, we have, um, we've got our, we channel our commitment to service through five avenues of, of service, which those services are club service and administration, vocational service, community service, international service, and youth service. And then we also have the four-way test. But our club actually ends up having five, which we'll get to in a second. Um, so the four-way test, early Rotary members emphasized the importance of acting responsibly and ethically using our professions as an opportunity to serve. The four-way test was developed by a gentleman named Herbert Taylor, and he was the Rotary International President from 1954 to 1955, and it was his guide to attempt to save a faltering aluminum company. And the four-way test is a non-partisan and non- um, Secretarian ethical guide for Rotarians to use for their personal and professional relationships. And the test has been translated into more than 100 languages and Rotarians recite it at club meetings, um, usually before the meeting is over. Um, and so our four-way test, um, which is actually five, is, is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? And is it fun? That is the fifth one. Rotary um, has an object, and that is to uh, to encourage and foster ideal uh, the ideal of service as a basis of worthy enterprise, and and uh, to encourage and uh, and foster that uh, the development of acquaintance is an opportunity for service. Uh, the um, high ethical standards in business and professions. Um, the idea of service in every Rotarian's personal business and community life. Uh, the advancement of international understanding, goodwill, and peace through fellowship. And um, the website talks more about that. Uh, I believe these are things that you can see right off the bat when you come to a Rotary meeting, that these are the sort of things that the people that are involved in our club are involved with. They represent these things. And uh, that's the main reason why I'm a Rotarian. Me too. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think we're ready for the next one. So what's next? I had that one. There we go. Um, the key to making the most of out of Rotary is to get involved in ways that suit your interests. The time you invest will yield rich rewards. So our question is, who will join us? So, we, I sent out our um, club organization chart that I'm hoping, John, can you pull that up really quick? Oh, sure. <laughs> Is that going to be another $5? <laughs> $5, yeah. <laughs> so, I had sent this out um, yesterday in the packet with the agenda. And it's the organizational chart for fiscal year 2021. And it lists who the officers are and the um, voting members and the non-voting board members, as well as the members that are on each of those um, positions. Uh, does anybody have any questions regarding that? Did everybody receive it? Okay. If not, just tell me to stop. <laughs> Okay, and then uh, John, can you switch over to our list of norms, etiquette, and ways of membership? So this was the other document that we sent out um, that goes over our um, list of norms, etiquette, and ways of membership. 
And so um, we broke them down into tasks and into philosophy. And so um, as far as tasks, members should stand up when addressed by the Sergeant of Arms, and that's Bob. Um, at the start of every meeting, the president may direct a member to lead the group with a pledge or a song. We always like songs. We always like songs. We can, we can pick up on everybody's uh, other talents. <laughs> the president may direct members to greet each other by shaking hands, bumping elbows, or whatever is appropriate. Uh, we haven't really been able to do that because we've had virtual meetings, but we were bumping elbows before and shaking hands before COVID. Uh, we give members an opportunity to contribute happy dollars to the club admin fund, the Rotary Foundation, or other nonprofit via the Sergeant of Arms for anniversaries, birthdays, and other special occasions. Um, some other things that people do is um, they get a new job. Sometimes they celebrate that. Or new grandbaby, or um, maybe their child won a game, a sports game, or graduated from high school, or something along those no. maybe they had their picture in the newspaper yeah maybe they had their picture in the newspaper bob likes to find you for that too <laughs> um we immunize uh, 50 children against polio as recognition for our guest speakers and then we expect members to wear the rotary pen to rotary gatherings which is right here uh, prospective members go through a proposed member vetting process and the board votes them into membership and we have several types of membership. We have regular member, corporate member, couples member, and honorary member. And then there's an announcement protocol which should be related to Rotary. So it's not supposed to be, um, it's not supposed to be a sales pitch or anything. Um, we're not chamber, we're Rotary. Uh, members may be fine for using and promoting their business name. Once again, we are not the chamber, we are Rotary. Um, the greeter has responsibilities and sign-up sheets. Right now, we don't have greeter responsibilities because we're virtual. Um, but this would reconvene when we start meeting in person again. And there's a six versus seven raffle tickets. Do you want to explain that, Bo? So, uh, raffle tickets. You want me to run down the? Let me run this up. Yeah. So, um, raffle tickets are typically a dollar a piece. If you our, when, when we were live and in person, we could get raffle tickets. Uh, if you hey, if you signed sign the signed up sign your name, there's a spot where when you come and check in, grab your name badge. There's a spot to um, to buy raffle tickets. If you sign your name uh, for five dollars worth, you can get six raffle tickets. But if you use cash to buy those raffle those raffle tickets instead of six or five dollars, you would get seven. So it's a little bit better odds for you. Um, I think I explained that correctly. Mm -hmm. It's been a little bit. Um, so that's 50-50, 50-50 drawings in, um, numbers drawn. Whoever, and we're still doing 50-50 um, raffles nowadays, uh, all virtual though. And so if, you're, um, if your number's called, then you can do whatever you want with your winnings. You can contribute it to some worthy cause. Um, part of Rotary. Um, sometimes we have a foreign exchange student. It's fun to contribute to their um, to their causes um, or keep it and take your um, significant out for a nice meal. And then the other part of it goes to um, foundation. Uh, so then, um, and then each at each uh, club event, there is a, a social media award that uh, John Zagel. Um, honestly randomly chooses and um <laughs> and distributes to whoever has been on the social media platforms and giving likes or different things to the uh, activities that are posting on our social media platforms i think john's going to talk about those things a little bit later um and then one of the things that was really fascinating to me when when i first started in rotary where there were all these different colors of badges and um when you first come into rotary here uh, with the Newport Rotary Club, you are a red badge. So um, that kind of indicates to everyone that um, that you're new and that you're trying to learn your way uh, through and the rest of us um, come alongside and, and help you out and make you feel welcome. Uh, and we'll talk uh, in a little while about what it takes to move out of that um, red badge, but then there's also blue badges and these are the 
members of our club um, that are uh, have been through the red badge process and they're um, fully serving uh, Rotarians and that's most most of our club members are blue badges and then you also see um, gold badges and these are um, folks that have uh, served as president for our club um, we actually have uh, one member Keith um, who has served as president as, as, of another club as well and we have some of, also some people that served at district offices and things like that and you'll see them recognized with their appropriate um, level of badge uh, gold badge and some indicators along the line um, okay so um, one of the fun things is when we introduce guests uh, if they are a guest and they're not a Rotarian, then um, if I brought my friend Bill with me to the to the meeting, uh, we would say, uh, I would stand and introduce, I brought Bill with me, and all of us, we would clap and welcome Bill to the club. Hi, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> if we have a visiting Rotarian uh, with us, which often in our club, we will often have uh, Jerry from Gold Beach. Um, and, and so uh, we'll introduce Jerry's, uh, Jerry's at our table, and we'd all enter, we'd all welcome Jerry by his first name, just like that. Hi, Jerry, and not necessarily clap for them. Um, all right, so uh, one of the fun things is uh, phone finds. So when we're at a Rotary meeting, we should not be on our cell phones. It's very difficult, but it is a nice break from your um, from your phone. So if your phone goes off, you're going to get a fine uh, from the Sergeant of Arms. And uh, it depends on the day how much that is. Um, so uh, we try to keep our phones silent. So we're paying attention to what's going on in our meeting. It's a nice break and it's worthwhile doing. Um, okay, and then uh, at the end of every meeting, uh, we're gonna have, uh, we're gonna stand just as Laura was saying, we're gonna do our five-way test for Rotary. One person will uh, lead that and uh, we'll, we'll dismiss out with that. Uh, five-way test and but at the beginning of every meeting uh, let's see here uh, just uh, we already discussed that we oftentimes will do the pledge or do something else okay very good all right Laura would you like to talk about philosophy sure okay. so now we're gonna talk about the philosophy so uh, membership matters committee we're here because members matter to us and we have a couple of red badges that we want to be able to help explain more about Rotary, answer any questions that you might have, and tell you that you matter to us. Um, the club likes active and engaged members and there is no free advertising. This is not the Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions so far? Or are we okay? I think we're okay. Kind of quiet. You guys are really quiet. <laughs> okay, so with that being said, I would um, like to ask John if he can go back to our agenda. Oops, okay. I sent him a lot of different things. <laughs> Thank you for bearing with me, John. <laughs> no problem. Okay, so we want to introduce our Membership Matters Committee. I am uh, Laura Kimberly. I am the chair for the Membership Matters Committee. This is... Bo Smith. I'm, I'm your vice chair for Membership Matters. And Freddie. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and Julie Hanrahan is also on our committee, but she's... Um, dealing with other things right now. Um, Mary Kay Dahlgren. Mary Kay, can you wave at everybody? And then Diane Nelson. And Diane was the former chair of the Membership Matters Committee, and she took over the Vocational Chair Committee. And then Birgitta is the other person who is on the committee as well. Okay, so with that, we're going to move to the next portion of our evening um, with officers and committee chairs. So I'm gonna turn it over to Freddie. All right, I'm gonna have to move my chair here. I can okay. maybe move this one over. I'll swap it. Oh, okay. okay. We're swapping positions really quick. <laughs> All right, comfortable chair. Hey, everybody. Good to see everyone. Hi, Freddie. Hi. So Laura and Bo asked me to talk a little bit about the five avenues of service and committee chairs. Um, 
I've got some papers here to, uh, to read those off of, but if I put my reading glasses on, they're going to fog up. So I'm going to do my best to uh, go from memory here, which shouldn't be too hard since we only have five. So uh, when we talk about avenues of service, those are committees within Rotary uh, that pertain to different service uh, avenues that the club provides. And the first is club administration and service. And so what that committee is responsible for are our venues for meals and meetings, um, uh, mainly the, you know, where we get together. And Doretta is our chair for uh, club administration. I don't think Doretta is on tonight, uh, but she works hard to uh, uh, keep, our, keep us in good graces with our venue, which right now is Best Western, which we're uh, away from for a while. So, so she's been dealing with them and coordinating uh, for us uh, to be able to resume when the time comes, when it's safe. Uh, next avenue is community service, and that's pretty self-explanatory as well. Uh, Tiana Tucker and Sylvia Polly are our community service chairs. And community service is responsible for the local projects that we do right here in our own uh, neighborhood. So that would include the efforts that we've, we've uh, been involved with this year for the food pantry and, uh, and even Salvation Army, uh, which Corinne I see is here. Hey, Corinne. Um, and, you know, the, the uh, foster children programs, uh, all of the local stuff falls under our community service. So that's a big part of uh, the club's efforts. Uh, next avenue of service is international service. And uh, I see Ursula is here. And so uh, Ursula, you wanna talk a little bit, bit about uh, what the international service committee does? There you go. Yeah. So, um... So the International Service Committee right now we're uh, we're a little bit stalled just because um, they're uh, because of COVID um, the so, some of the kinds of things that we were hoping to be able to do this year was to um, you know maybe go to to some of the conferences and things and meet some people who um, might be able to you know be connections to doing projects that are uh, in, in other parts of the world. Um, we recently completed a pretty extensive project in Kenya. Um, I was not involved in that project. Claire, Claire Little, uh, who was the former chair at Signe Grimstad, um, was on that committee and a big part of that, Catherine Rickbone. And so, um, and they, they did a variety of different things um, for the school, you know, fences, latrines, booths for um, selling items, local people selling items. There were, there were a lot of components to that. Um, and so what we are hoping to do for our next project is really get to know um, some, some group, some Rotarian group in, perhaps Mexico, some place that would be a little bit easier to travel to, um, and then, uh, you know, de develop friendships first, and then work on creating a an international project. Um, other projects I know that people have done internationally are um, bread ovens so that uh, young people in, in uh, third world countries could uh, have a vocation and you know learn to be bakers that sort of thing there are clean water projects there are library projects those those sorts of things so we are um we're we're a, on a little bit of a, a hiatus right now just because of this the state of things but um those are the kinds of things that we would we uh, ha have done traditionally and would like to do again in the future so our our committee right now is signe Grimstad, Julie Hanrahan told me she will be on our committee as well. Claire Little is still on the committee. And me, so anybody else who's interested, we're always happy to take new members. Thanks, Ursula. That was a great explanation. So uh, our next avenue of service is youth services. And that's also on a little bit of a hiatus currently because uh, we can't have exchange students coming or going right now, unfortunately, with COVID, but uh, 
that's always been a, a favorite of mine. Um, I, I uh, see that Kathy Heater uh, and Amy Thompson, I don't think are on tonight, but uh, they, they're working hard to uh, really make our youth services uh, portion of a uh, committee a strong one. Um, one of the first things when I got involved with Rotary that I had the fortune of, of getting involved with was hosting an exchange student. And really I hadn't even considered it until Kathy Heater called and, and there was a, I guess an issue with one of the placements of a, a girl from Germany. And uh, our daughter at the time was around eight. I think she's, yeah, she's 15 now. So she would have been around eight uh, when we first hosted. And I'll tell you, it was just the greatest experience in the world for, for our daughter and for our family. Uh, Laura from Germany is who we hosted. And actually, I've been in communication with her ever since. And I think she'll be joining us for an upcoming Rotary meeting here uh, in the near future. But it was a really great experience. And it's really life changing for the kids. And I think that's what really um, made it so rewarding for us as, uh, as a, a family. We've hosted uh, three or four cents. Um, and I'll tell you, if you haven't hosted, it's a great experience and really neat to be involved with the youth, youth uh, services portion of what our club does too. Uh, we have a uh, annual Newport weekend every March. Unfortunately, that didn't happen this year. It was just set to happen, I think the week after everything changed with COVID. So. That was canceled this year. Hopefully, we'll get back to that next year. Although we won't have uh, we won't have uh, inbounds, I guess. So maybe we'll just have an outbound weekend. We'll see. But uh, anyway, youth service is a big part of what our club does, and a really neat uh, uh, committee to to participate and be involved in just the overall things that that happen. Um, I guess it kind of falls under youth service with our students of the month too, to an extent. And uh, I think we have our first students of the month on uh, Thursday. Is that right, Raina? So that'll be neat. That's always a really rewarding uh, part of our meetings too. Um, along with that, we have a four-way test speech contest every year. And I imagine this year that might be digital, uh, YouTube, who knows, but uh, but I'm working with district to try and figure out how to make that happen without kids being in school to really, uh, you know, get the get the word about it. So, so uh, that that'll be interesting this year too. But hopefully, it'll happen one way or another. And uh, so, our fifth avenue of service, I see our chair is here, Diane Nelson, vocational service. Want to talk a little bit about that, Diane? Thank you, Freddie. Um, as Freddie said, the vocational committee addresses one of the five avenues of service that support the object of Rotary. The vocational avenue of service speaks to the second point in the object of Rotary, which is high ethical standards in businesses and professions, the recognition of the worthiness of all useful occupations and the dignity of each Rotarian's occupation as an opportunity to serve society. Our committee, the Vocational Committee, works to advance the idea that Rotary was founded on the concept of networking and doing business with other Rotarians as part of serving the Newport community. I have a few people on my committee. Freddie's on my committee and Doris Lamb is on my committee, and uh, Lola Jones is on my committee, and Paul Kimberly is on my committee, but as Ursula said, we're always looking for people who might be interested in serving. All right, well, thanks, Diane. Laura, did you want me to go through anything else, the officers, or? Uh... Um, we wanted, I want to keep, and uh, Don to say something. Okay. And then um, Mark Miranda was going to talk to you as well. Yeah, that's right. Okay, sounds good. So uh, Keith Nelson is our foundation chair uh, this year, and foundation is a big part of uh, 
rotary too. That's that's what our uh, Paul Harris bucks uh, go towards. Uh, Keith, if you want to talk a little bit about that. Sure. Um, there's a lot of things that the Rotary Foundation does, principally leverage and uses the leverage of each club member and each club with each district to do international projects. It's a means for the clubs to collect money to fund projects locally and around the world. We collect money for the foundation, but we also tap the foundation to help fund our projects. So often you can contribute money to the Rotary Foundation and have a local project and our district and or the foundation will help us co-fund a local project also. Some of the things we've done here locally are the literacy park that's just down the hill uh, towards the ocean from the library was a rotary project. Sister City Monbetsu Park over behind, you kind of have to really be intending to go there to find it just uh, to the west of uh, Columbia Bank. And there's many other things we've done. They talked about, uh, I think Ursula mentioned the uh, project in Kenya. That was something that was done through the foundation. We had a project when I was in Pullman, we did in Tanzania that we provide electrical service and water service to a village just to the far north of um, Kilimanjaro that had not had any water, potable water service and or electricity. So that was something that we were able to do there leveraged with the Rotary Foundation. Our signature project from the foundation is polio eradication around the world. Since we've started the uh, <clears throat> polio eradication, we've inoculated uh, somewhere around two and a half billion children. And we're about 99.9% .9 eradication with only three countries left in the world that have polio. So that, and locally, uh, recognition points, what you get for when you give to the Rotary. Uh, it goes in increments of $1,000. You get, I don't know if you can see what's plaque. You get a plaque like this. No, nope, where's the camera? <laughs> I can't, yeah, here it is, I guess. You get a plaque, um, you get a pin, and then you get, they attach uh, stones to the pin for each $1,000 up to nine, nine pins on it. If you give out of your estate, to the permanent fund, the endowment fund, you become a benefactor. You can also give a thousand cash to the endowment fund and become a benefactor. Within our club, we have 200, over the history of our club, we have 235 Paul Harris fellows that have been, came from the Newport Rotary Club, 77 multiple Paul Harris fellows and eight benefactors. And over the history of, our participation in the Rotary Foundation, our club has given over $447,000. So it's a big deal. Any questions? Yeah, that's a lot of money. Jeff Thank Peterson is the other committee member here and we're certainly open for more committee members, that's for sure. Well, thanks Keith. Let's see, our next officer I see present is Jim Graham, our secretary. Jim, you want to talk a little bit about what secretaries do? So as Rotary, as secretary of the Rotary Club of Newport, I mostly take attendance at meetings, but I've not been doing that lately because Keith has been covering for me. Uh, but that's going to change soon, sometimes to be determined. Anyway, taking, taking attendance, keeping attendance, ensuring that uh, makeups are booked and, and counted toward perfect attendance. Perfect attendance is sort of a badge of pride that a lot of Rotarians seek to have perfect attendance so they can, they can have a, a marker of how dedicated and engaged they are in Rotary. It, back in the good old days, uh, attendance was a mandatory part of Rotary uh, participation, but we're not quite as uh, stickler to the, it's, it's just a really good thing to do and a great, a great way to show your participation by attending. And if you don't attend, bank meet, meet makeups so that you can get credit for the meetings you miss. 
In addition to that, I take board meeting minutes and disperse those to the uh, board of directors. And as red badges, you've probably seen on your red badge checklist that attendance at a board meeting is one of the requisites for getting your blue badge. And it's also a way to earn a makeup. So it's a double bonus when you attend the board meeting coming up on Tuesday, October 6th at 12 o'clock on this very Zoom channel. All right, thanks, Jim. All right, next up is our treasurer, Mark Miranda. Well, thank you. Um, John, if you can put up the, the little uh, thing I wrote out. I'm not gonna read this whole thing. Uh, basically, I, the treasurer is, uh, I collect money and distribute money for the club. And we can see that uh, those are some of the, or some of the places that we send the money to. And the uh, cost to run the club is, I haven't figured it out, but I know it's well below 10%, which is I think average for most uh, organizations for overhead. So we're doing pretty good there. Then the quarterly dues payments will come out quarterly. And you can see some of the charges that will be on the on your your quarterly dues, and we appreciate uh, the checks that are sent back in uh, promptly. And also, if you if you want, uh, we can take credit cards. Uh, the majority of our money is kept with the Lincoln County Foundation. Uh, I think there's well over three hundred thousand dollars there. Uh, the the big that big pot or the majority of it is for uh, student ex foreign exchange. And so we had a, a benefactor many years ago, Connie Gates, that uh, uh, provided us with that sum of money and it's grown over the years. Uh, so we, we do tap into it whenever we have uh, exchange students. And that's about it for uh, the club treasurer's position. It's nothing, uh, nothing exciting but uh, it does uh, help the, the club move along. All right, thanks, Mark. And next, we've got the guy running the, the slides here. Uh, John Zagel is our vice president and our uh, uh, media uh, expert. So take it away, John. Great, thanks, Freddie. Um, I took this over a couple of years ago. A couple of things that people said in the club was they didn't know what was going on in the club. There's a lot of stuff going on in this club and it's easy for things to get lost. And then we don't advertise all of the good stuff that we do. So that's kind of my job is to get the word out and find places so you can, if you need any information about our club. So basically we have these five areas. Um, it's either a website or a social media or email. So we have the website, which I'm going to show you. We have a Facebook page, which can be found at Rotary Newport, Oregon. We have an Instagram page that just started. We have a YouTube channel. One of the things about that we now have with our Zoom meetings is that all meetings are now recorded. So if you do miss it, um, you can now watch the watch the entire meeting and then you can send your 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 uh, makeup to Jim and Jim will give you credit for that meeting and actually Jim I think our attendance is pretty good um, considering this COVID thing our attendance is pretty good um, and then we have a rotary email which is a good thing to communicate and then I'm still working on the app I think when it starts raining again um, I'm going to start working on the app again it's I just don't like it right now. It's, it's about 50% done and I don't like it. So uh, I want to improve it before I, before I put it out there. So um, just um, quickly, just the highlights of our, of our web page is probably the most important page is our meeting recap page. So every meeting has a recap. Um, we take pictures of people that attended the meeting. We have the guest speaker, a recap of the meeting, and then who won all the meeting winners, and then a link to our videos. And so every meeting 
has that. So you can go back for a couple years and, and go to that. Um, another thing is you can go to all of our programs. If you want to know who's speaking um, next Thursday, this Thursday, I guess, the students of the month, you can see all of our programs. We have a calendar um, all set up um, all the way through December, I think. All ready to go if you want that. And then there's over 28 pages. There's an archive. You want to know what was going on in 2012. On January 5th, there's what happened on January 5th in 2012. So um, just a great archive. So that's the website. Um, we have a Facebook page, typical Facebook page. We do a lot of posting there. And then what's, what's this? This is our YouTube channel. So like I said, um, you can watch all of our past meetings right there. This meeting today is being recorded. So the ABCs of Rotary will be posted later, probably tomorrow. It takes me about two hours to, to edit this and then I'll post it. Um, so we could always come back to that. Um, so I think that's it. Freddie, did I forget anything or Laura? I think you, I think you hit it, John. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, John. I, I, John's really done an amazing job with our social media and websites and Facebook, the whole nine yards. I was just going to ask though, is there a way to edit those YouTube uh, meetings? You know, if I introduce an exchange student from a, say they're from the wrong country or something like that. I think there's a, there's a fee for that. Um, <laughs> or a Kimberly fee. Um, yeah. yeah, I can do that. Okay. That's that sounds good. Make a mistake. It's, I guess. Yeah. I it's with, etched with the in history. Yeah, I know. That's, that's tough. That's the tough part about these zoom meetings. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the All funny right. part about that, Freddie is he did believe it or not, Nico did the same thing. He figured he was nine hours off from us. Oh, so he, he? he, Nico had done the same thing with me before. And then even a couple hours before he come on and says, Oh, geez, Keith, I'm so sorry I missed it. And I said, don't know, Nico, come on. We're, we're, you're in Eastern, we're just in Pacific, you're all right. So if Nico, Nico get, did the same thing. Well, maybe it was him that convinced me wrong. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, I'm going to turn it back over to Laura. And Oh, sorry, Sonia is on, I guess. Sorry, so, Sonia, I didn't see. She's with the Seize the Day Committee. Also very important and a big fundraiser for us. So Seize the Day, um, we started in 2019 and um, it, it was a great fundraiser. What we did is we uh, had these little rubber dolphins and um, we sold adoptions of the rubber do dolphins for $5 each. Um, we had a heli well, it was supposed to be a helicopter actually drop the dolphins um, onto the fairgrounds and towards a dark target that was drawn on the field there. And then the dolphin that lands closest is the one that uh, whoever had adopted that dolphin would win the $1,000 cash prize. We had a whole bunch of different other prizes as well. Um, the Traeger Grill was one of the, uh, the big prizes, um, a whole bunch of hotel certificates. Um, one of the great things about this fundraiser is not only did we raise a lot of money for the Rotary Club, um, I think I believe that it was just over twelve thousand dollars that we raised. Maybe it was in the high eleven thousand um, dollars. But we also it's also a great way for other nonprofits um, to raise funds because for every five dollar adoption that's purchased, the nonprofit it will get uh, one dollar. So it's just a nice way. You don't have to do any of the work. All you have to do is uh, sell the adoptions. Um, I am looking for, always looking for people to be on the committee. We didn't, of course, have to get to have it this year because of the, the COVID. Um, and um, hopefully we'll be able to restart it up again next year. Uh, we were hold it at the fairgrounds. Um, on the Sunday of the fair uh, is what we were hoping for this year. And that way we can sell tickets throughout the weekend of the fair. Um, hoping to have the life flight helicopter be able to actually do drop it for us or um, if not them, maybe somebody else, but it's definitely more fun out of a helicopter, although the city came to our rescue and dropped it off of the extension ladder from the fire truck uh, on, in 2019. Uh, we will be having a, uh, a committee 
to meeting to talk about how to use the funds for Seize the Day. Um, I was supposed to be on uh, September 29th. I think I'm gonna have to um, change that, but, um, but it'll be, if not, then it'll probably be two weeks later. Um, so it's not the same day as the Rotary Board meeting, but the following week after that. So I'll be sending out notices if anyone's interested in joining us either to talk about how to use the funds from Seize the Day or to be involved the next year in the Seize the Day Committee. Please let me know. Well, thanks a lot, Sonia. <clears throat> yeah, Sonia and her committee's efforts have really uh, made an impact in, in our ability to uh, do a lot of the things we've done this year to help with this COVID uh, relief in town with the food banks and so forth. So that was a huge help. Great job with that. All right, I'm gonna turn it over to Laura and Bo and Paul, by the way, happy belated birthday. Bob's not here, so <laughs> I think you're in the clear for another week anyway, so. <laughs> okay, so we use different communication tools to keep everybody apprised um, that John had talked about, but we send out 11, um, 11 weeks of letters to our new Rotarians um, explaining different avenues of Rotary and the history behind that. So Corinne and Nathan and Jeff had received those. Um, and we send those out um, every week to let people know what's going on and then give you different action items that you can try to work on that'll help you move from a red badge to a blue badge. Did I miss anything, Bo? Um, we also use the library or the library website. See, <laughs> I'm doing good. We use the cha I'm doing it again. The Rotary website that John had ex gone over and showed uh, showed everybody. Uh, we use the social media avenues. Um, we were using the app, um, like John had talked about, and then um, newsletters and emails that everybody will receive about what's going on in the club. Um, call to action. Um, different fundraisers that may be going on that Rotary is involved in or events that are going on. Um, like a couple of years ago, we there was a meetup over at the uh, Salishan for a concert where people could come and hang out on the, um, out on the grounds and listen to a concert. That was great. Um, so that comes out. And then we also have a process to move from a red badge to a blue badge and that should take around six months, give or take. And um, those items are meeting with your sponsor and completing the list of tasks, um, attending a new member orientation meeting, which is this, the many ABCs of Rotary, um, earning an online makeup that Jim had talked about on how you can do that, um, which is great. Um, serving as a greeter three times right now, we don't have the greeters. <laughs> It'll be nice when we do. Um, attending a club board meeting, and that takes place on the first Tuesday of the month at noon um, via Zoom right now. Um, and then we also participate in hands-on club projects. So one of the more recent ones is we did a beach cleanup um, that Amy Thompson helped organize. Um, and then attending four Rotary activities and one calendar month. Um, things are a little different right now with COVID, not as much as happening. And then securing a committee assignment and meeting with the chairperson is one of the other items. And then bringing a guest to Rotary. Um, using the app was another one, but we didn't include this on here right now because that's a work in progress. Did I forget anything, Bo? No. When people are new, they get a list of this. Oh, uh, yes. When you're new, you get a list of this and we're working on updating it. Um, to signify the current times right now. So that'll be sent out to everybody as well. Okay, I'm gonna turn it over to okay. Bo. <laughs> right. So uh, for the most part, that takes care of our, um, of our things to talk about. Does anyone have a question or do any Rotarians have something that you would like to add to what we have said tonight? I would talk just a little bit about the Rotary Friendship Exchange. Would you please do so? <laughs> one, of the, one of the avenues of service is international, and part of what we could do international and what we have done, our club has done just two years ago, 
we had an international friendship exchange come in from South Africa. We hosted them for four days here in Newport. They traveled around the district and got to know our district well. And we have not, since I've been here, scheduled an outbound, but we could also do something like that once the COVID is on the other side of all our present. Uh, we have a committee with uh, Dietmar and Paul working on trying to create, come up with a virtual friendship exchange. And what we tried to do initially, at least the club that had expressed a little interest was over in St. Croix, there's four clubs, but they didn't respond back. So we reached out through our district Rotary Friendship Exchange district coordinator, co-coordinator Camille Ranzio to reach out to Atlantic Canada that was supposed to be here this past May and do an exchange with us. So we're gonna reach out to them and see if there's a club there that's interested in coming up with some uh, a pilot virtual edition of the Rotary Friendship Exchange. And then we'll work with Ursula to try and identify a club where we can do a uh, international service project with a club in some other country that we can maybe do a virtual exchange of some type to kind of gear up to get ready to do uh, a international project. <laughs> Actually, there's three types of visitor exchanges that I, I was only aware of the team exchange, but there's also a visitor exchange where individual Rotarians with uh, their family members go and do an exchange with another international family of Rotarians and it's a formal project through the Rotary called a International Visitor Exchange. And then there's a univocational, what they had call it. We used to do a, a help me this. We used to bring in students. I, I forget what the name of the, the project was, but we had students come in that were traveling around the country to learn how the United States worked and how our government worked, how how our area worked, and it, it was a what? Study exchange. Yeah, group study exchange. I'm sorry, I couldn't come up with the name. We, we the, Since probably two years ago, the Rotary stopped that program, but they have a univocational exchange where a person, let's say, is an architect like Dustin. Dustin would meet with an architect or have an exchange with an architect maybe in Spain, and that would be a program within the Rotary to do a vocational exchange in, in that regard. So there's three different formal projects. The other part that you need to know about the exchange is self-funded. So the people involved in the exchanges fund the exchange, the Rotary underwrites uh, the, the mechanism to allow that to happen. But uh, that's our friendship exchange. Very neat. Very neat, learn something right there. Thank you, Keith. All right, anyone else? No. Okay. All right. So without further ado, <laughs> we would like to do the rotary five way test of the things we think, say, and do. Are you ready, Bob? All right, let's go. Okay. <laughs> and pretty? <laughs> okay. Is it the truth? Is it the truth? Is it fair to fair all, to all concerned? Will it, Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial, beneficial to all concerned? And is it fun? Good, fun. <laughs> Good job. Yay! Yay. <laughs> Thank you everyone for being here. We try to be really respectful and condense this into an hour and try to get everything in. Uh, Corinne, I don't know if you and Nathan have any additional questions. Um, what was that again? Sorry. I don't know if you have any additional questions, but let us know if you do. Um, without further ado, we're done. Thank you. Thanks, guys. All right. <laughs>